Larry Ellison and Satya Nadella were on stage, maybe for the first time, maybe first time in Seattle, what on earth is going on? I mean, cats sleeping with dogs, dogs and cats. I mean, what's, what's happening? I don't know. Next, you're going to see uh, Mark Benioff sit down there with them, and then you know the world's just come to an end. No, no. That, that, you know, Benioff did, uh, did, did work at Oracle for a while. He's a protege in yes. many ways. I mean, at this point, I think he's created his own success, but he certainly did build some of those chops under the the guidance of of larry ellison yeah you know it was a little weird to see the two of them on that stage together but at the same time maybe one of the most indicative things to where the world is today and also let's not be you know let's not be inaccurate the two have had a, a fairly robust partnership around cloud for some time Peering, yeah, like good, good, a lot of peering stuff. Yeah, there's been a lot of peering regions for Oracle's cloud that are 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 sitting with Azure. So there's there's proximity. So, yeah. but here's what's going on: is Oracle has some of the highest performance database capabilities on the planet. But as we know, in the era of AI, uh, having the data running in a hyperscale cloud provides access to a lot of AI tools. Yeah, Microsoft has pretty much hitched its wagon to OpenAI, but it's betting big on Azure AI services and on the ability for companies to build AI on top of their data in Azure. Oracle has these high-performing databases that are basically used by every company on the planet, which we heard from some of these companies yesterday. And they're at this inflection between trying to do AI on-prem and trying to find this cloud euphoria, this... uh, uh, this, you know, this perfect u- utopia for cloud and AI development. And so the two companies had something the others want. <laughs> Workloads and, and utilization of AI services for Azure. And of course, for Oracle users, the ability to benefit from all that data and all that high performance database capabilities in using the Azure ecosystem. So I guess, Pat, when the two companies find something that the other is infinitely interested in consuming, <laughs> You can find a way to put these two CEOs on stage together. But you can all, like I said, they have actually been pretty cooperative. You know, Pat, as I see this, it's a important inflection to what's going on in the market. It's an interesting moment where I'm looking at kind of what companies like SAP are going to say about something like this. Yes. Um, it's definitely been the Oracle run over the last few uh, several quarters to A, show strength in, in its uh, performance across the database platform, to B, uh, continue to make cloud services a growth engine for the company, especially IaaS. You saw huge growth numbers there. But C, you're seeing them branch out and saying, look, we're going to build a really successful, robust cloud business. And yes, our hardware will be mo- probably most performant, but we can still perform really well in other clouds. And by the way, in this case, you're getting both. You're getting cloud at customer on Azure, benefiting from AI tooling, um, and it all comes together in one place. So solid stuff, Pat. I don't have a whole lot more to say about this, but what I will say, I guess, is, is this the first of a few? Are we, you know, because with all the peering, this made sense for Microsoft, but if Oracle really wants to open the 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 the, the gates, could you see this in Google? I mean, could it happen? I mean, I don't know. And as of now, I think this is it. But I do think with Oracle's power and uh, powerful database and the fact that probably every customer of every cloud company on the planet is using Oracle, what could come next? What surprise might Larry Ellison have up his sleeve next? Yeah, you know, I've been in tech uh, over half my life. And it is funny how some of the stalwarts that that began created this industry are are still the power brokers isn't that crazy and i think i even found myself maybe 10 years ago not writing off oracle but if i looked at their innovation path on infrastructure uh, on core database and in the cloud they just looked like they were operating multiple clicks uh behind and kind of lumped them and Microsoft uh, into the same place. The Microsoft had their breakout moment uh, that coincided uh, with Satya uh, becoming uh, CEO. And then uh, Oracle really had a couple breakthrough moments here. One of them was Gen 2 uh, UCI, right? 
Uh, Gen Gen One uh, wasn't great. Uh, it was actually quite awful. Uh, they they literally wiped the slate clean uh, with Gen Two and started racking up a ton of business, albeit maybe five years after AWS and Azure uh, kicked in, in into high gear. Uh, at the same time, they modernized their database. Right? They modernized their database uh, with a value prop that said, "Hey." You don't need 12 different types of databases. You can have one. And, and by the way, that one database actually actually auto fractalizes to multiple types of data and multiple types uh, of it. But you it, it, it's simple. And then they added the autonomous uh, portion on top of it to uh, remove some of the tasks that uh, DBAs and data managers uh, used to have to do. And by the way, also, by by automating it, reduced the likelihood of, of mistakes. And to make a long story longer, <laughs> what they also did is they also remained strong in in the hardware portion, right? If you look at their storage systems, that uh, for particularly uh, for SQL are the highest performance out there. They are not using generic hardware, right? In fact, they use very high speed, not just memory, where they cram it all up in there, but they also used um, Intel's highest performance uh, storage. And then they uh, wrapped their heart, their software around that. And I think we've seen a lot of instances where the combination of software and hardware uh, becomes vitally important. I mean, my gosh, look at Apple, hardware plus software. Look at AWS, and there are, I think, five different brands of hardware uh, that they have, in, including Nitro. So uh, Oracle is not just taking database code and running this on generic. And by the way, that's not a, uh, uh, I'm not putting Azure hardware down, but it's 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 basic uh, generic uh, hardware and putting in exadata machines, okay? And this is, is very unique into the Azure data center and then putting on top of it all the Azure PaaS uh, and SaaS capabilities. So the big things I'm going to be thinking about is, you know, I always talk about the 75 to 90 percent of enterprise data is still on prem. What, what does this mean for that? Right? Does this, you know, does this with all this data kind of put inside of Oracle and SAP, is this going to make a dent? on that 75 to 90 percent uh i don't know you know i i these things always take time but an indication of their customers that they had rolled out for uh for this 30 minute uh video were telling right fidelity right uh voya uh those are two obviously uh fintech and then you had pepsico right a major a major manufacturer uh, on there but Anyways, exciting stuff. I think you broke down kind of the win-win uh, situation here. By the way, if you're AWS and you have a hate-hate relationship between you know Oracle and AWS, they're the last place I would ever expect this to happen. Uh, well, do you notice I even I mentioned Google? <laughs> I didn't even mention. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a potential, right? You have you have TK, and uh, I, I think we would be ignorant to think that that personalities don't matter in this business and it's all analytical right tk used to work for larry ellison right and my guess is that they still have conversations heck um uh our, our friend at uh, salesforce mark benioff used to work uh, uh for him as well so personalities matter the first next place i would expect this to go would likely be google the last place i would expect this to go would be aws aws doesn't you know, they didn't accept, accept DGX Cloud, right, which was NVIDIA architected hardware uh, in there. But uh, here we are with Azure. So great stuff. Looking forward to learning more next week at Oracle Cloud World. Dan, you and I are going to be there with Bells. Rock and roll.